So if everybody who has open interest takes delivery, the market blows up and defaults. First off, it doesn't default. It just changes to a cash only uh, settlement or it resolves it in a different way. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics. And a quick video about an interesting comment that someone pointed out to me. Several people have sent the interview that Jeff Christian of the CPM Group just did on Kitco. And here's an interesting question that I will let you hear for yourself. Can you tie all this back into a recent YouTube video that you've done entitled Silver Futures Contract Default Not Likely? And uh, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, there are a lot of people, again, who consistently misunderstand purposefully or by accident how the market works. So you've had people since the mid-1980s say that, oh, there's not enough silver to meet all the demand, and you're going to see a uh, default in the silver market. And you've had promoters primarily people who sell precious metals products, touting to investors, oh, the silver market's going to explode because there's not enough silver to meet all this demand. One quick note that I want to be completely clear on, I do have a relationship with Miles Franklin, as well as several sponsors that are mining companies. Although as I have plenty of witnesses who can testify to, I was talking about silver and I left Wall Street without a source of income and lived off my savings. I drove a taxi and Uber for a year. So long before I was ever paid a dime for anything I've done, gold and silver related, I was saying what you found later in the book. And I'm happy to provide a long list of witnesses to verify that. Massive naked shorts that don't actually exist uh, on the COMEX. I just have to factually correct that because he says large short positions that don't exist here, as Ronan Manley pointed out, there is the SIVR prospectus and they were so worried about short squeezes that Jeff Christian says is impossible that they added language into the contract confirming they're worried about an online campaign to harm hedge funds and large banks with substantial short exposures to silver. So what Jeff just said there is incorrect and untrue. It's going to explode. And, you know, Kitco has interviewed me for 30 years about this. Um, JP Morgan's going to go bust. Goldman Sachs going to go bust. Merrill Lynch before them. Drexel Burnham in the 1980s, you know. Interesting that he actually mentioned Drexel Burnham in the list of firms there because Drexel Burnham, as anybody who's been in finance should know, did go bust. You can see he was forced into bankruptcy in 1990. These massive naked shorts, which they didn't, uh, but they're going to blow up in their face. And you'll see these guys come on Kitco. You guys like right. to promote them. And they'll say, oh, you know, by October, the price of silver is going to be $100 because it's going to blow up. And it yeah. doesn't blow up, right? Now, that's a fair question to address. Certainly, myself, as well as many others, have been talking about this for years. And Jeff, in several interviews, has said that because it hasn't happened yet, that's the evidence that I'm wrong. To which I would counter, what is Jeff's response to these Deutsche Bank transcripts? Where here you see Deutsche Bank and HSBC traders on chat scripts that were brought into a court case saying how they really want to sell silver. Let's go smash it together. If there's no short position and that's just complete nonsense, as Jeff says, here on May 11th, 2011, keep in mind that's 10 days after silver was at $50 while QE2 was roaring. And again, there was buying of physical silver price drops. And 10 days later, we find out a Deutsche Bank trader was telling his friend at UBS that the cartel was the silver market. To which UBS replies, referring to the silver market, we smashed it good. And they express on the transcripts that were released to the, to the court case, how they're jealous of how it played out. So A, to say that because something hasn't happened mean that it won't. That's what many people said leading up to the housing bubble and that line of thinking got them clobbered. I learned from that. And not only is that the same type of thinking, there's also a very clear reason why the price has not risen. This is it. 
I don't know who Jeff's clients are. I've, I've been told that they are banks. I don't know if that's true. I didn't see it on his website. Is Deutsche Bank a client of Jeff? He mentioned that he had a relationship with Goldman Sachs where Jeff Curry has been revealing a lot of unusual information. I have not heard Jeff Christian comment on that. That's not a name that I would want to drop in the metal space right now. But anyway, when you hear that people have been talking about this since the 80s and it hasn't happened, I would love to know how Jeff Christian would respond to that. What they tend to do is they'll look at the ratio of open interest to, to, to metals and they say, okay, you know, there's big open interest, 700 million ounces or whatever. Uh, and there's only 400 million ounces now of silver registered or eligible in the New York market to meet that COMEX uh, demand. So if everybody who has open interest takes delivery, the market blows up into faults. He's confirming that it's a fractional reserve basis and it's dependent upon people not taking delivery at the same time. Uh, but what you need to do is you need to realize that 99 point X percent of those open interest, those trade contracts never get delivered upon. That's one thing that they don't get. That's exactly the point because you don't need a lot of people to take delivery to get the ending of It's a Wonderful Life. He just confirmed that for you. But here's the part of everything that's said here that really I would suggest paying attention to. So if everybody who has open interest takes delivery, the market blows up into faults. First off, it doesn't default. It just changes to a cash only uh, settlement or it resolves it in a different way. Changes it to a cash only settlement or resolves it in a different way. So if everybody who has open interest takes delivery, the market blows up into faults. First off, it doesn't default. It just changes to a cash only uh, settlement or it resolves it in a different way. What are the different ways it can be resolved? Can those different ways be changed given that SLV changed its prospectus and put language specifically about a short squeeze then sent Jeff Curry onto TV before that happened, after that happened, never mentioned that. So what are the other ways that it can be resolved? What is it that needs to be resolved? Is he acknowledging that he's concerned about the pressure that the physical buying is put on there? And when he keeps talking about this is conspiracy theory, I've never heard him once address the buying in the physical market that's been reported from dealers around the globe. Why wouldn't this buying affect the price? First off, it doesn't default. It just changes to a cash only uh, settlement or it resolves it in a different way, which the bylaws of the COMEX have always had in the capacity to do. Yeah. And they did a liquidation only order in, in the late 1970s uh, when there was congestion in the silver market. When there was congestion in the silver market, it was the exact same thing that's happening now. Although I have experts who were alive and were trading COMEX futures on record talking about how this is more extreme. 99 point X percent of those open interest, those trade contracts never get delivered upon. That's one thing that they don't get. Actually, I do know that Jeff. I'm very well aware of that, Jeff. That's why I asked Commissioner Chilton when he confirmed. I appreciate you mentioning the spoofing. Curious uh, because uh, my understanding of what, how some of the manipulation has occurred is that, you know, if silver is trading $20.05, there's a lot of stop orders placed around the $20 handle. So often if the price can get pushed a little bit, then you get a lot of those high frequency algorithms kicking in and then you'll see a drop with many feeling that people kind of nudging a little are then able to buy lower. Does that right. sound like a reasonably accurate portrayal to put it in perspective to folks or would you phrase it differently? Well, it's a, it's a good portrayal, it's a good portrayal, but it's actually, it's a very good portrayal. But the difference in your description is that Today, when a market moves because of a spoof, it can move a lot more. Former CFTC commissioner who confirmed everything that you're calling conspiracy theory. Everything is backed up by evidence, and I can assure you that's just the tip of the iceberg. I do not think you're being truthful. You're saying stuff 
that is confusing people and costing them money. And I really wish you would stop it.